So this is the beginner's guide. It's written by or made by one of the people who worked, who is like the lead creator of the Stanley Parable. Uh, it, I can't remember his name, but it's the one who's not William Puff because I know William Puff went on to do Crows, Crows, Crows. But yeah, and I've already set this up, so hopefully we don't have encoding or anything like that because in theory this should work fine. I hope. Hopefully we don't have the technical issues we have with the Stanley Parable at the beginning of it. So let's go. Please make sure your audio is on. You got it, man. W, A, S, and D, and left click. All right. Hi there. Thank you very much for playing the Beginner's Guide. My name is Davey Reedon. I wrote The Stanley Parable. Oh, hey, and Davey. while that game tells a pretty absurd story, today, I'm going to tell you about a series of events that happened between 2008 and 2011. We're going to look at the games made by a friend of mine named Coda. Now these games mean a lot to me. Uh, I met Coda in early 2009 at a time when I was really struggling with some personal stuff. And his work pointed me in a very powerful direction. I found it to be a good reference point for the kinds of creative works that I wanted to make. So just to start you off, this is, I think, the first game he ever made. It's a level for Counter-Strike. You can walk around here, by the way. And uh, mostly it's just Coda learning the basics of building a 3D environment. But what I like God, the is that even though down. he starts from the simple aesthetic of a desert town, he then scatters these colorful abstract blobs and impossible floating crates around the level. And of course, it destroys the illusion that this actually is a desert town and instead this level becomes a kind of calling card from its creator. It's like a reminder that this video game was constructed... No problem, I'll up the game. Let me know how that is once it comes back in. ...by a real person. And it kind of makes you wonder, what was going through his head as he was building this? This is what I like about all of Coda's games. I mean, not that they're all fascinating as games, but that they are all going to give us access to their creator. I want us to see past the games themselves. I want to get to know who this human being really is. And that's exactly what we're going to do here. So, it's 2008, Coda starts making these games, and he never releases any of them. He doesn't put them onto the internet, he just makes them and then immediately abandons them and they sit on his computer forever. And I think he really understood this image of himself as a recluse. Uh, at one point, he jokingly renamed his computer's recycling bin to Important Games Folder. So, you know, this was just how he worked. He tended to crank them out one after the other without even really pausing to try to understand what he had just made until suddenly one day, he just stopped. In 2011, that was it. He made his last game and then he hasn't made another one since. And that's why I've taken this opportunity to gather all of his work together. Is because I find his games powerful and interesting, and I'd like this collection to reach him, to maybe encourage him to start creating again. And if the people like you who play this also happen to find his work interesting, then I'm sure it'll just send that much stronger of a message of encouragement to Coda. Sorry. Just had a pop-up on my computer that I need to get rid of because it was over the uh, game. Is the volume good? And also... Quick note, I didn't actually notice the floating crates until he explicitly mentioned them. So thanks for joining me on this. If you have a particular interpretation that I haven't mentioned here, or if you just need to get in touch, you can email me at d-a-v-e-y-w-r-e-d-e-n at gmail.com. Okay, that's about it for introduction. Let's take a look at Coda's first proper game. As each game is loading, I'll show you the date that it was completed. This first one was made in November 2008. Very interesting intro, especially the fact he gave an email address. I'm going to guess it's not his main email address, but this is a game that was released on Steam. I would never attach a personal email address to that. Also, 2008. All right. This game is called Escape from Whisper, and it's one of the more generic games you'll see from Coda. So far. 
It kind of looks like this game was abandoned mid-development. For instance, you have this gun, which you'd think would indicate that there are supposed to be monsters or enemies somewhere, but then clearly there are no enemies anywhere. You can't even reload the gun when you run out of bullets. But ultimately we don't really know. Maybe Coda thought that actually it was complete the way that it is. And I think that we should talk about his games for what they are, rather than for what they're not. Enemy force neutralized. Begin shoot I love how you can see the bottom of the universe from this room. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty fun. Apparently, the space station has a labyrinth on it. I... Uh, sure, I don't know. There's really no reason for it that I've ever been able to discern, so in the interest of time, I'm just going to skip you on past it. Okay. Okay, this is the part that's interesting. The game has this narrative about the whisper machine and how it has to be turned off, and then you get to the engine room. Here's an interesting thing about this game. I'm genuinely not sure if I'm being told the truth. Um, what I mean by this is... There is an inherent thing here, which is if Coda developed these games and never released them, how did Davey get hold of them? Um, I'm not saying he didn't. I'm not saying that he's lying to us, but he could be. Uh, it, it would go in tone with the Stanley Parable to be a very kind of self-aware, reflective game if it turns out these are actually Davey's games or... Something along those lines. I'm, I'm not sure, but it's, it's interesting so far. I'm not 100% sure what I'm playing. But I'm down. Hey, you there, in the engine room. You could save us all. That beam is powering a whisper machine. We could disrupt it by introducing a great enough heat signature. If you... Your body could stop the beam. It's so much to ask, but for all of our lives, would you do it? Could you give yourself... Uh, yeah, sure. I'm super fucking perceptive. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Let me pause here for a second. What you just experienced, stepping into the beam and then dying, is probably what Coda had initially intended when he was developing this level. But when he first compiles and plays it, something goes wrong. There's a bug somewhere. And this is what happens instead. Pay attention to everything he says. All right, I'm down with linear games. I, I was saying earlier, I'm, I'm not sure whether it was before you got here. Um, we had to like choose whether more options was good or not, and I said I genuinely don't know because as much as I like open world games and open ended games, linear games are generally for me a better experience. I, I love open world games. I love open ended games. My favorite game in the past 10 years is The Witcher 3, which is open world and loads and loads of mini quests and such like. But at the same time, games like The Last of Us, which is another one of my favorite games in the past 10 years and probably means more to me than The Witcher 3, but I think I prefer The Witcher 3 as a game. You know, The Last of Us or Uncharted 4, which I recently played, they're completely linear games, but because of the fact that they are completely linear, there is such an attention to detail. Which, to be fair, The Witcher 3 has an incredible amount of detail as well, because it really stepped the, you know, it put, put the bar way above where other open-world, open-ended RPGs were, and that's why a lot of people criticize RPGs now, like Mass Effect Andromeda, because they don't live up to The Witcher 3 hype. It's unfair. Witcher 3 is uh, just god-tier level of that sort of game. But anyways, um, so yeah, I, I enjoy linear games a lot, though. Is what I was trying to say. Anyway, it's beam. I, I go up. Oh. And now you can see the whole map. I can see the maze. The bottom of the universe. The beam causes you to start floating. And this is an important moment for him. Because yes, this is technically a glitch, but Coda identifies something human about it. Like how small it makes you feel in the face of this larger chaotic system. 
Or this floating could be the afterlife, a peaceful place, juxtaposed against all of the hysteria that you've just had to traverse. I, I don't even know. Uh, I have no idea what he was thinking. But what's clear is that after making this, something lodges itself in his brain. He wants to do more of these really weird and experimental designs. So he stops work on this and moves on to a stream of tiny little games that go in all sorts of directions. Let's go ahead and take a look at the first game he made after leaving this one behind. November 2008. This is just after. The past was behind her. Okay. Okay, so when I was a kid, my brother bought... Uh, I think it was like called Game Studio and it was like the third one or something and you could in theory make your own games on it although I sucked at it and it wasn't yeah, so it try was... walking backwards I will do that in just a second Davey um, anyway so there were like default levels that you could modify and this was like look, one of them looked exactly like this yep in this game, you can only walk backwards. <laughs> okay, right. Gotcha. So it's a short and relatively minimalist experiment combining motion and narrative. It is less advanced than the previous game, but actually it seems to be more focused, more complete. Code is trying to give it a unique voice rather than simply basing it on a pre existing trope. The past was behind her, but the future could not be seen because you're walking backwards. Why does the future keep changing? When she stops and looks, it becomes clearer. But if the future is always behind her, how will she find the strength to confront it? It's a short little thought, it says what it wants to say, and then it ends. Didn't need anything more than that. Which to me is why it works, because it gets out quick. Okay, next one. Same month. Wait, oh, did say he was pumping them out. Alright. I can only walk in a straight line. I can't walk off the path. That's interesting. You are now entering... Slender? So you are now entering... Entering what? Oh. And that's it. Okay, the meaning of this game won't be clear just yet. Please uh -huh. be patient with me for a few more games, and I promise you'll see what makes it interesting. Okay. December 2008. Okay. Oftentimes, Koda would put bizarre titles like this one at the start of his games. Nonsense, nonsense is in nearly every direction. I wish I'd known him at the time that he was making these early games. He would really only talk to me about his work as he was making it. Once he stopped work on a game, like, that was it. It was dead to him. And I don't agree with that at all, but what are you going to do? Alright, I'm curious. What's around on the ground level, I guess you call it? I know it's tempting, but there's actually nothing over here. Sorry. <laughs> That's pretty cool. What happens if I step off? I can't. Okay. So is there anything over here? You just said over there. What about over here? This also reminds me of a lot of like the testing areas for video games, with like, like testing out animations and how combat works or whatever. They're usually these incredibly minimalistic maps, you know, no no textures or anything like that. Um... All right, I'm guessing there's just absolutely nothing on the ground floor. Creepy music though. It's almost like a siren singing on the wind. That's poetic. Well done, me. I could be a poet if, you know, I had anything meaningful to say about the world. Because I'm... Here's one of the things. I, I said 
on Twitter about um, this game when Namely suggested it and I watched the trailer is I I am very judgmental of what I write, what I create, and I'm very concerned about what other people would think about it, not just in terms of whether it's good, but also what it says about me. And one of the particular reasons why I'm so concerned about that as a creator is I genuinely don't know what my own creations say about me. So that's something I'm intrigued about, particularly with this game, is I, yeah, it's, I don't know. As a film student taught to, like, look at what the creator means, but I don't know whether, I know I don't know what I mean when I'm writing stuff. I don't know whether any creator does. Maybe it's for, oh, I'm going slower. Once you've been slowed to an absolute crawl, the door at the top of the stairs opens. So why, if code is not showing these games to anyone, why bother opening the door at all? Well, to show you, I'm modifying the game here so that when you press enter, it'll bring you back up to full speed so you can enter the door for yourself. Okay. Play as a pair of floating eyes and winning footsteps are key in one game unlocks the door. Jesus, that's a lot of shit. You start in a small room until you realize you can just walk through walls, you're at a gate. A key in one, a key in one game unlocks the door on a completely separate A room separate that's warm and nice and filled with little ideas for games. But you can't get to the door. Coda would often to tell me that he didn't mind if people thought of him as cold or distant. He said that he knew that he was actually a vibrant and compassionate person, but that it takes time to really see that. It can be a very slow climb to get there. Well, that isn't the truest shit I've ever heard. If I the loud body just sound... Oh, <laughs> okay. January 2009. Ready, set, fish. Well, this is new for Coda. It's an actual puzzle. Go ahead and see if you can solve it. Nope, I think I may have just trapped myself. Like, oh, hold on. Thanks, XOF, for uh, uh, hosting for one viewer. Don't forget that solution, because we're going to see this puzzle again soon. We're going to see it a lot. Does that... I feel like that harkens back to um, the, the, the past is behind you thing, because I had to look behind me to get it. I need some frame rate so that seems to be, right? You walk down a corridor, you solve a puzzle, you get to the end. Simple enough. All right. Now I'm going to modify the game again, so that when you press enter, it'll remove all of the walls from this room. Okay. Hmm. How about that? There was more to it than we had any way of knowing. I actually find it funny that this game comes after the stairs game, since they essentially convey the opposite idea. So, uh, in the stairs game, a dull exterior concealed a rich interior. And then, in this level, a dull interior hides this fantastic outer world. Either way, I think that the point is the same. Is that most of the time, you don't get to know what you're missing. Or even that you're missing anything. That's not your role as a player. 
So if your role here is not to understand, then what is it? Life's pretty good, XOF. Thanks for asking. The internet's pretty shit. I'm sorry about that. You are now exiting. Aha. Uh -huh. So this, combined with the entering game from earlier, tells us that Coda believes his games are connected somehow. It could even be that the stairs game and the puzzle game are literally connected in between this and the entering game. There's a bigger picture that all of his games are meant to play a role in, some larger meaning that we won't be able to grasp until we've seen all of them. And once we have, we can step back and start to understand what exactly that bigger picture is. March 2009. The Great and Lovely Descent. Alright, that house is not large, it's just really far away, right? Really? Let's talk about video game development for a second. Every video game runs on what's called an engine, which determines what the game can and cannot do. So in other words, the engine is a set of tools for game development. Right, to me, especially from where I started, this to house make all of these games, Coda is using an engine called Source. Like all engines, Source has certain things oh, that fuck. it does well. Hey, Yosa. Um, how are you doing? I forgot. I'm not playing the Stanley Parable anymore. I changed game, so... Whoops. I did play the Stanley Parable, but then I moved on to the beginning. Game. Thanks, Joseph, for the follow. My condolences. How are you guys? But yeah, um... From where I started especially, this house looked like a miniature house, like a dollhouse. Didn't look like there was any distance between us, which is interesting. Well, and it has certain things that it does poorly. One of the things that it does very well is boxy linear corridors. That's why so many of Coda's games are set in these large, flat, empty rooms, is just because he's working with what the engine does well. Okay. The tools available to the creator shape what kinds of creative work they're gonna end up making. You might consider paying attention to the architecture in Coda's games, to notice how they seem to stem from an engine that's very good at producing linear, boxy corridors. Sadly, the smiley poop emoji doesn't work. I'm sorry about that. There is something weirdly beautiful about this room right here. I don't, I don't know what it is, but I stepped into it. And I'm just like, I feel like I'm, I feel like I've seen this room in a painting somewhere. Maybe it's just because it's all, um, it's all what's it called symmetrical. Feels very alien as well.
It's also weird how in the Stanley Parable I was compelled to break the game. In this, I'm compelled to obey the game. Like right now, I feel like it's telling me to go into this cell and then it's going to close the door on me and I'm compelled to do what it wants. Yeah. This prison, funny enough, in Coda's original design, the door stayed shut for a full hour before letting you go. If you don't mind, I think we're going to skip that. This is something that he and I used to argue about a lot. You know, whether a game ought to actually be playable, whether it means anything if no one can get through it. And I would always defend that, you know, all this work goes into the game, why not make it playable and accessible? Sure. And so we just got into heated arguments over it, and there was one time that after one of these conversations, he went home, and a day or two later, he sent me a zip file entitled Playable Games that was full of hundreds of individual games, each of which was just an empty box that you walked around in and nothing else. Believe me, I played every single one of those just to find out if there was like a gag hidden somewhere. There wasn't. This is an interesting parallel as well because I've had that argument before with filmmakers um, or film students. Whether a film should be entertaining or not. Um, you know, there's a lot of art house films that are not enjoyable to watch. And it's interesting because. I am of the argument that a film should be entertaining. Uh, the, the reason narratives exist is primarily to entertain and also to reflect. Um, and, and, and that is where I can see the contradiction in my argument is that it's also to reflect and reflect is not always entertaining. Uh, particularly I'm a hypocrite because I don't like the film in the sense of watching it but I think it's a fantastic film. I remember seeing 12 Years a Slave uh, years ago in the cinema. That film disgusted me in, in, in a number of ways. It, one of them, and it sounds cheesy and whatever, but it made me feel bad about being white. Even though really I have no reason to feel bad about being white. I don't agree that the sins of the father are passed on to the son or anything like that. You know, Yes, white people have done some despicable things in history, but I've personally never owned any slaves, so therefore I shouldn't feel bad about it. But that film still made me feel disgusted about it. And that film is not an enjoyable film to watch, but it is a fantastic film. And it's about something that actually happened. So... Yeah. Interesting stuff. Something he hasn't mentioned yet, whether uh, Coda put music into his games, because most of the games, well, none of the games so far have had music, some of them have had audio tracks. Um, this is the first one with music, I wonder whether Davey put it in himself or what. Yeah, I feel that, namely. I've actually seen it twice, because I was also... Um, uh, we watched it in class one time after it had come out in cinema, but I saw it in cinema as well. So I've seen it twice. Uh, it was not any more pleasant the second time round. Um, it's the puzzle again, with the exact same solution as the last time. And all these games are connected, so you should know the answer to it. But yeah, I definitely agree with that. It's, uh, most of them I can watch any one time. There's I've only still seen... no clear indication of what makes this puzzle so special that Coda is going to return to it over and over. But I promise I'll share with you my interpretation very shortly. Sure. Um, I've only seen Schindler's List one time, for example, which is similarly a disgusting film in a number of ways. Um, but an uh, important and poignant one. I think that's really... Why those films in particular? Because I am not a fan of art films. Uh, I get why some people like them. I just personally can't watch them. I don't find any enjoyment in them. Um, art house cinema is what I mean when I say art films. Um, 
obviously films like Schindler's List and 12 Years a Slave are not art house, they are traditional films, but they're about a difficult subject and they're not entertaining. Um, but I think the main difference is for me, I've never seen an art house film and thought, man, that's poignant and needed to be said. I have thought that about both 12 Years a Slave and Schindler's List, so. But as I said, I'm very biased against uh, art house cinema. But I know it's a contradiction because neither one of them is insane to me, but I will watch one over the other. Listen, listen, listen. You there, did you come from up above? What was up there? Here, Coda begins using a kind of dialogue system that he fashioned out of the engine's chat capabilities. Use the one, two, three buttons on your keyboard to respond. Okay, let's talk about the prison, I guess. Yeah, there was an enormous prison I spent hours in. Yep, there was an enormous prison, that's not what I said. That's the world above. You've been there. Now this is important. Did you have to get for a puzzle with two doors and switches? Yes, I did. This was literally the last thing I did before coming here. Again, perfect. Now please tell us how you solved this. Tell us the solution. Tell us how to get to the other side. I guess I'll say, trust me, you don't want to go over there. Oh no, but I do. We do. We need to get there. Do you understand? It's the most important thing in the world. We have to escape the prison. There must be an ending. I promise you, there is nothing I want more. How did you get here? Was there a puzzle you had to pass through? Yes, do you want to know how to solve? No, no, we actually find the blank space between the doors to be far more interesting. Have you seen it yet? I don't recall the space between the doors. I guess I do. There's a corridor, there wasn't a blank space. Don't worry, I'm sure you will visit it again soon. Be sure to pay close attention. And so we make one last descent down to the final floor of the level. space between the doors. It's a lamppost. Okay, I can't tell you quite why, but for some reason, Coda fixates on this lamppost. It's going to appear at the end of every single one of his games from here on out. I'll tell you what I think. Uh, I think that up to this point, you know, he's been making really strange and abstract games with no clear purpose, and maybe you can only float around in that headspace for so long. Because now he wants something to hold on to. He wants a reference point. He wants the work to be leading to something. He wants a destination, which is what this lamppost is. It's a destination. We're going to see it in the work as well. His games are just going to become a lot more cohesive, a lot more fully developed, with more of a clear idea behind them. And as we go, that idea will get clearer and clearer and clearer. It's interesting that you're talking about destinations, given the uh, the speech about the destinations and Stanley Parable, and whether it doesn't matter what you do in a game or in life, because there's always going to be a destination. We're always heading somewhere. April 2009. I, I'm still suspecting Coda might be daily. This game is connected to the internet. As you walk around, you can leave notes. All notes you see are left by other players, but no one played your games, you never released them. If he never released his games, no one played them other than him, 
all these comments are left by him. So first off, I'm sure you can deduce this, but this game is not connected to the internet. All of the notes that you're going to see have Fuck been yeah. written by Coda. This was actually the first game of his that I ever played. This was shortly after I met him at a weekend game jam in Sacramento, where I grew up. I saw him working on this very level, and it was just so different from anything that anyone else was doing. So right away I was like, I have to be friends with this person. In retrospect, I think I was probably a bit too pushy trying to get his attention. Uh, I was over-enthusiastic. But he was very gracious about it and very patient with me. And I cooled off eventually. I'm pretty proud of myself for working that out before I was told that. No point to this. So this is all, like, his own commentary on his own work. This is a... Uh a very direct look into his own perception of his work rather than a metaphorical one this is a literal one it's all the criticisms that he hears he feels alone he needs someone to talk to oh, feel free to skip over any of these notes if they're not doing anything for you nothing extra is going to happen if you read all of them I either won't. way to me, they convey a sense of loneliness. I see this person who's filled with thoughts and feelings and beliefs and has no way to express them except as scattered and unheard voices in a game that wasn't meant to be played. Sure, that's what I was getting as well. But it's ironic, isn't it? That in playing this game and seeing how alone Coda often felt, that we get to know him better and actually kind of connect with him. And I have to be honest with you, this idea is really seductive to me. That I could just play someone's game and see the voices in their head and, and get to know them better and have to do less of the messy in-person socializing. I could just get to know you through your work. Sure, I think I get this that. is why I always liked Coda's games so much, is because it felt like they let me have that connection. I felt as though he was inviting me personally into his world. And then I feel less lonely too. Sure, I, I, t I totally get that. Um, both musically, when you're listening to songs and, and, and you feel a connection with that artist and, and, and then you feel not so alone. Or, or, or the other thing I was gonna say is, I, I've always found it easier to connect to people over the internet. Um, I suffer from minor, minor social anxieties, unless we're talking about on the phone, in which case I suffer from major social anxieties. I, I, if, I, if I were to go to a party, I'd be the guy standing in the corner, talking to someone online where I can edit what I say, and I, I don't have to come across as charming or funny in the same way. It, it's, it's all intellect and not nerves. So much easier. And then you feel a better connection with them. Hey. This place makes me sad. Uh, sad's not the right feeling for me. That guy over there wrote much wrong. I'd rather be doing much wrong. Doing this. Hey, I can't type here. There are too many messages in this area. Why? We're running out of space. Soon we will suffocate. Cool cavern, bro. In a world full of notes, one man will read all of them this summer. You will believe blue speech bubbles can talk. Do you feel like a hero yet? This game is no nice. I would like it when I could. What? Do not be afraid. Do care. I just saw a flying penguin. Let me tell you, it was the most majestic thing I've ever seen. I do not feel living. I feel like living because nothing will ever be as majestic as that. I never want to see anything. Again, if nothing will ever be that beautiful again, I am crying now. I'm planning to rip my eyes out. I must go now to do that. Alright. That. Um, how is there wood and grass and concrete here? What the fuck? Balls. I want to tell you a secret once upon a time. I did dot dot dot. Define fun. I'm the king of the world. What the shit is this cavern? Boring. I 
can assure you, I can assure you, guarantee that there is an acorn somewhere here in this place, and the sailors are looking for it. All right. Hey guys, just looking for someone to talk with. I refuse to believe. But ass but. I need to go to the freaking bathroom. Recognize me, please. There's nothing here. Go back. Don't listen to that guy. A free t-shirt. Need other side door. Why you so? Door how open? Open sesame. Mix game includes door. Cannot open door. Thanks. Someday I will meet the person who made this. I hate people because of the inter interal good feeling I get. I help people because I... Okay. New room. Do you hear the chimes? They keep you going, don't they? I would like very much to be desired. Who wouldn't, bud? Forget of writing something. Don't want to feel judged. I feel that as well. It's not very crowded here. You can go in here, I think. Welcome, congratulations, I don't really know where to go with this. Um, the game where you leave notes and suddenly everyone's a pervert. <laughs> this is where I get off. I fail to write anything here. I am compelled. Stop, turn back. Proceeding further will only result in misery. Take my hand, let's jump together. I kind of want to jump. Should I jump? What's this one say? Cabbage shapes our nation. Alright, I'm gonna jump. Probably not gonna make it because I can't even sprint. I don't think I can sprint, so. I can't. Huh. Okay. What is that painting? One not. It does not matter if you ever get over there. Hey, don't talk to me about that way. Wait, what? Hey, don't talk about me that way. I completely read that wrong. Very good game. Jump, I can't, unfortunately. I think I'm this. It's not going anywhere. Next time, I will do better. I need someone to talk to you. Can I leave a note? Yeah, I can't leave a note either. This is the note. Don't listen to the other notes. I'm not safe. Today I learned you cannot fall off. Me too, bud. Ethical. Stop faking it. Painting, what does it mean? That's another thing that I just just occurred to me with that guy saying stop faking it what what is what do what these notes say uh, beyond him being lonely and all of that or everything that Davy touched on the other thing that this says is if you believe what the game tells you that this is connected to the internet and every note is left by a player then what that means is that this is played a lot this has got you know a couple hundred notes that means a couple hundred people played this relatively unknown game but it's a lie they were all made by... I've actually forgotten his fucking name. <laughs> I've forgotten uh, Davy's friend's name. Does it say? No, it doesn't say. Alright. But the guy who made this uh, wrote every single one of these. So he's faking it in a way because he's making it look like it's more popular than it actually is because it wasn't popular. No one played it. Whoever made this has issues. I mean, yeah. Everyone does, though. Art. Coda. Thank you. And thank you as well for saying you're digging it. Hey, guys. how How's it going? Just hanging. I think it's about how things look messy from up close and perfect from far away. That's interesting. I actually kind of prefer it from this angle than I did back there. 
you see more of the detail, you see more of how the colors mess with each other, but in a kind of pretty way. Hey, True. How you doing? From up here, it just looks like dots. I mean, it looks like dots from far away as well, though. Help, I am trying to speak. Well done, all of you. I saw a person walking down there, now it won't come back. Sad face, or crying face. Good to know, True. Who are all of you? We will all die someday. Cabbage shapes our nation. That's... Two people have written that. Well, two versions of Coda have written that. Spoilers, it doesn't mean anything. Stop pretending you are other people. That was Coda as well. <laughs> Devil Tower Star. It's about how this game is pretentious and you all suck. I'm feeling... A very strong sense of nihilism from Kodo as well. Devil Tower Star, second one. He was himself the most horrible creature you could imagine. Yeah. Maybe I'll feel real someday. Well, I'm here now. Yeah, we're all here now. There must be a reason for it, though. His terrible secret, he kept it well. I beat the game. More room. At the end of this level, we're going to see the puzzle yeah, again. And here, judge. I'll tell you what I think the puzzle means. Each of these games represents an idea that was on Coda's mind at the time that he was making it. And the puzzle is a way of closing the door on a previous chapter of his life before moving on to the next one. I can see that. Almost there. I have seen everything. I've traveled the world. I've never told anyone. I wish there was notes in the real world. So that he could communicate with people. That's what I was saying before about talking to people on the internet. Because one with the spiraling nonsense. Or was that become? Yeah, become one with the spiraling nonsense. Downward, keep digging. In each of his games, after exploring a theme that, you know, he might find difficult, Coda can then place this puzzle that he knows has a reliable solution, he understands exactly how it works, and so it gives him a simple mechanism for moving on. Does this puzzle have a solution? OMG, I've been literally here for an hour, what the fuck do I do? How? Shit, how do you solve it? Develop the answers, please. This doesn't make sense, the second door won't open. Help. And because there's this dark area between the doors, a space between spaces, before you move on, you get to pause. Just for a moment, a few seconds to reflect on and let go of the events that led you here. To step back and connect the pieces together. To grasp at that elusive bigger picture. So remember when those those guys that were like you could talk to them in the game, sit the, sit the black between the doors. I thought they meant like those really thin corridors that I had to go through. And I was like, they weren't black. I, I don't know what you mean. I didn't realize they were talking about this, and it just occurred to me. I'm dumb. Uh, no answer. I think I'm heading back to the start later, guys. Guys, it's not so bad in here. No solution. There is no second switch. What I think is particularly interesting about this as well is this isn't just the black between the doors. Well, first of all, I've never noticed that. There's a light there. But also, there's this smoke. I wonder why that was put in. Other than to make it look interesting. So that's like basically the only effect in any of his games is the smoke right here. It's never, everything else is very basic. The typewriter? How'd you leave notes? Yeah, a bunch of typewriters. Is 
thousand monkeys and a thousand typewriters in a room, one of them will write Shakespeare. I think that's how the quote goes. Are you there? Please say something. Give me anything. I just need you to say something. Talk to me, please. Why are you having so much difficulty talking? Speak, 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 speak. May the June 2009. Porn stars die too. Okay, this one is tough. It's gonna kind of just spin its own wheels for a few minutes. Hang with it. Okay. Yeah, I can't remember. I, I'm pretty sure, like, I paraphrased the quote. I'm, I don't think I got it correct, but it's it's something along those lines. Speaking of monkeys, that they're not monkeys, they're apes, but I really want to go see War of the Planet of the Apes. Probably going to do that at some point this week. See, like, this is it. The whole game. And there's nothing that's particularly interesting about it. You just walk to the end of a hallway. Except, for some reason, Coda gets really fixated on this prison that has all of this modern furniture. And I don't know why, but he decides he needs to revisit this prison. He's going to start over, use the same assets, turn it into something else. Okay, cool. Here's version two. That's the word I was just saying, okay. Well, furniture ought to go in the center of the room. Yeah, I mean, uh, sure, TV. That's a table. Okay, now about what? About along the wall of the room. Sure, huge picture of a horse. Have you played Antichamber? I have not. The one with James Franco in it is the first in the new series, Rise of the Planet of the Apes. I fucking love the the new versions of Andy Serkis in them. I think they're fantastic. Um, I think the original's pretty okay, and the Tim Burton one's bad, but the new ones are just on another level, and I love them. Uh, I think we should light up the room a bit. <laughs> Put live Tesla cores in each corner. I, I, I prefer natural light, so let's get a skylight. He's not doing anything that I tell him to. Like the big orangutan vest. I, I, um, I, like, emote with uh, the orangutan. Okay, sure, that's just bullshit. Tables were invented in 1935. There's a bit more to this one, but still, it's not really communicating anything. It, it's kind of just weird for weirdness's sake. Like my dance taste in music. So, okay, he throws it out and starts over. This time he comes at the prison idea from a different direction. Hello, please walk forward. This guide will enable you to escape any prison environment. Follow the instructions carefully, take care what, that you remember each step. First, click on the table. Good, go over to the photo frame and click to turn it slightly. Now turn the floor lamp in this room off, then turn it back on. Now go to the left side sofa and move it over and over. Finally touch the shelves. That's it. In a real prison, the escape will now open. Return to the start to be taken back to your prison. Okay. Return. And of course, now the table is gone and you can't begin the chain of events to escape. Here's a version where there are no bars, but you can't actually get to the well. 
and then a version where the inside of the prison is the outside and the outside is the inside. Let me just blink you real quick through a few more of these. I mean, he really unloaded on this prison idea. There's nearly a dozen of them. Personally, I think it's awful to watch this, to see a person basically unraveling through their work. And for what? Like, at what point do you just go, eh, maybe there are game ideas other than this prison that I could be working on? But Coda doesn't have that voice telling you to stop, that particular mechanism of defense against yourself. Without it, you just spiral. And so he keeps going and going and going and going and going, and then he hits on something, and he likes it. And that's it. He's done. He stops making prisons. This is the very last version of the prison game that he created, and the reason I think it works is that the prison is not actually in it. Okay. A phone box and a lamp post. Street lamp. Real quick note. This is going to sound weird because whenever I try and explain it to anyone, no one gets it. I find phones, especially phone booths, something really poetic about them. And if I was to get a tattoo, it would probably be of a phone booth. It's that idea of like... Being in the middle of nowhere, no way to contact anyone except for this. I don't know, I find it... Yeah, it's hard to explain. And I sound like a widow. Alright. I... Okay. Hello? Who is this? Hey, it's me. I'm you from after you escaped the prison. You're me? Dot, dot, dot. So you were trapped in this prison too? It's a yes. conversation. And so this is what Coda wants, is to be able to talk to someone, to share what's on his mind, and to get some good advice from someone who knows. But the irony is that even in this scenario, you're still talking to yourself. You know, all of these games so far are Coda talking to himself. Yeah, I was in the reverse prison. That's why I am right now. Oh, I'm so glad you know that I, that I... I'm so glad to know that I can get out eventually. What's it like to escape? He is like completely still and wildly in motion at the same time. Do you feel any different? Some things I'm scared of. Sometimes I'm scared I'll get out and then things will be exactly the same as before. No, I'm really the same person now as I was back then. Oh no, that's awful. That's the worst thing I can imagine. The problem is you don't actually know who you are right now. What if you're me, then... Wait, if you're me, then you did get a call from another person of you when you were trapped. Then did you? Uh, no, I think I'm the first person to pull back. Sorry about that, my game all tapped. And can you tell me how to get out? Maybe I can come find you. What do I have to do? To get out, just talk with me for a bit. What? That will free me? How does that work? Again. Listen, you can't know until you're out, but I promise it will. Okay, I can talk. Let's just talk for a bit. Will you be here? I will be here as long as you need. That's pretty I cool. I can see it? why he considers this a fitting conclusion to the prison games. After all of the obsession and frustration. Just to be told by someone you can trust that things are going to be okay. Wouldn't that be nice? I'm guessing the Welsh just don't have, like, garden gnomes. 
Sorry, I had to. Cheap shot. August 2009. So what would it look like if Coda wanted to make a game about talking to someone other than himself? There's um there's a thing, I don't know if it's like British wide. I've I've not seen it in London at all, but I've seen it a ton in my hometown. They where they take uh old red phone booths and they turn them into uh book donation booths, I guess. You can just like get books off shelves in them. To me, this environment is meant to represent Coda's puzzle, with the two doors on either side and a dark transitional space between. Well, my goodness, I'm glad as heck that you showed up. Thought I might be having to clean this entire house by all by myself, and right miserable that would have been. Everyone knows lonesome hands make uh, lousy homes. You'll notice that the quality of the art is a step up from previous games, including this new and improved chat system, which he started using from this point on. From here on out, he begins putting much more effort into the visual polish of his work, and this particular game took two months to create as a result. This game is called uh, The Beginner's Guide, and it's, uh, um, it's, it's it's by this guy who made The Stanley Parable, and it's kind of this like self uh, self reflective uh, look at video game design and what it is to be an artist who creates stuff. Um, there's actually one in my village, namely, the village where I grew up, which is pretty cool. Don't worry about me. Place is nice, I'll be glad to stay here all night. Well, now you just might be getting a little ahead of yourself then, no? Why don't we start cleaning and then you decide whether you could do it all night? I'll finish up here. In the meantime, could you please clear the table? Oh, you don't mean that table, okay. Much nicer, that's the table I want to see. Now would you please run into the bedroom and make the bed? Oh yeah, I saw this in the trailer. While you're in there, why don't you straighten out the rug a bit? All the little details matter. <laughs> yeah, I guess they do. How do you end up doing this job? A friend dragged me along at a time where I was particularly desperate for cash. Turns out I've never felt so good doing something for money in my whole life. Never did like cleaning my own home. Might get some demons I ain't ready to face yet. Oh, speaking of demons, someone's put this couch in all in a mess. Would you come and straighten out these pillows here? Oh dear, looks like someone spilled a drink over by the couch. Maybe mock up as long as you're over there. I feel compelled to share an incredibly cheesy personal insight. You okay with that? Make it especially cheesy. Dot, dot, dot. Dot, dot, dot. No. No, it's stupid. Sorry, never mind. Hey, these dishes need to be washed. Why don't you come do that? Real quick, I feel like I'm not Coda. The player character in this game made by Coda is not Coda. Coda is the NPC that he is talking to. That's my theory. When you come do that, sure. Last, I checked the tub need I checked the tub needed the clean. How about you scrub it as best you can? No need to be perfect, we're all just human. Are there still books scattered on the floor in the bedroom? If so, would you put them back on the shelf? Perfect. Now then, how about you come and clear these dishes off the table? After the intense set of prison games, this house cleaning level almost feels like cleansing. 
It's the moment after a particularly difficult or traumatic experience where you just need to let it sit and digest inside of you and eventually cohere into something meaningful. If we started clearing the table was the first thing that they asked me to do. these chores ever end. Darling, let me tell you something. Whatever work you do, you have absolutely got to own it. Otherwise it owns you. So why don't we be with this task at hand and leave the future chores to future you? Present you wants us to move out the rug in the bedroom. I know that Coda not. really liked this Trust game. Me on this one. Of all of his work, actually, this was the only one that he called me up to ask me to come over and look at it. This was during a period of a few months where he was like grossly happy all the time, just walked around with a constant smile on his face. Looks like the tub has gotten rather dirty, would you mind tidying it up a bit? Da, da, da. Earlier when I said I had a really cheesy thought, I was going to say it occurs to me that one's house is a lot like one's soul. You take care of it, and it takes care of you. Huh. Don't know why I felt so weird about saying that. But there's a bit of truth in it now. Anyway. So. Housekeeping. Let's keep doing this. Books. Would you please clean up the books? Thanks. Oh goodness, those pillows over on the couch are a real mess. Would you go over and straighten them up a bit? I'm glad he found some peace. So here's another interesting thing. So the house is like the soul, right? And that's that's a metaphor that works kind of in real life. Uh, the house helps us feel good about ourselves, makes us feel safe, and helps keep us clean. And in return, we had to look after it. And we have to look after our souls, but our souls keep us on a, a straight and narrow, I guess you could say. The difference is in this game, there's no downtime. There's no time to revel in having a good house. It's constant. It's a constant cleaning process. I think maybe what Coda's trying to say is... You're always going to be working on self-improvement, right? Uh, no one's ever going to be happy with who they are. Um whether it's mental, or physical, things you want to change about yourself, whether you're in a relationship or not, whether you've got a good job, where you're headed in life. I think it's cheesy. The curse of being human is we're never content. Dot, dot, dot. Question. Do you but, enjoy this? Of course, it can't last. The music stops, your companion is gone, it's time to leave. The door at the top of the hill is now open as well. Again, you can't stay in the dark space for too long. You just can't. You have to keep moving. It's how you stay alive. Here we're going with my metaphor, built on the metaphor of the soul. Eventually, you had to stop trying to find things that are wrong with you and just move forward with life. It's something that occurred to me recently is I have a friend who goes to the gym. He probably had a fairly similar weight belt to me in college. A little bit, uh, you know, a little bit tubby, a little bit out of shape. And we both started going to the gym and I stopped. The reason why I stopped is I pushed myself too hard one time at the gym threw up and felt awful for like two days not just in terms of muscles aching but just like felt like shit and i just didn't want to go back to the gym he kept going and he threw up a bunch and he pushed himself harder and harder and harder and now it's three years later and he still goes to the gym still works out a lot uh you know takes whey protein and all that eats food that he doesn't enjoy and he looks good and he still keeps on pushing himself, and he hates his body. He looks a lot better than me physically, but he hates his body. I kind of hate my body too, but 
that I also eat food that I like and I don't torture myself. What I realized is this, thinking about that, is to him his body is something that needs fixing, right? He needs to fix what's wrong with him and to him that's his physical appearance so that's his body. To me, if I ever started working out again regularly, which I occasionally do, but not regularly enough to have any like significant change. I mean, I've lost weight recently, but I don't look particularly good, I don't think. I don't like how I look. But to me, that's not a... F the mental state I'm trying to get into is that that's not something I need to fix. That's something I need to improve. I can polish, but I don't need to fix. You know, it's... it's my friend is not a broken table. He's a table that needs polishing. There's a difference. Cheesy Which is the whole point of the puzzle doors, right? That sooner or later you have to pick up and move. I really thought that was the point of it. September 2009. Items you love at members. This one gets prices. a bit goofy. Why did you come here today? Was it to improve your life? Was it to get a better job? Was it to make your relationships more meaningful? No. You came here to become perfect. The workshop is going to teach you how to be perfect. I want your friends, the people in your life, to look at you and think, Wow, this person is a better human being than I am. Right now, who do you think about that way in your life, in your own life? Who do you know who is so well developed as a person that they make you feel disgusted with yourself? compared to whom you feel useless, selfish, and grateful. I intend to make you into that person. Perfection is within your grasp. And the question is not how do we do it, but how do we do it effortlessly. This is easy. It is so easy. It is so easy. About halfway through the game, perfect the perspective shifts. Okay. Spark got you. And you play as the teacher. And suddenly, you discover that your teacher is just as bigoted and afraid as you are. Oh, and also you can move around the classroom now. So I've got three options, but two of them are grayed out. This is the key, how do I achieve it with no effort? On the way to work, I told an elderly person to start contributing to society. Number three, kids should not follow their dreams. So. Oh, I can say those okay. Well, let me tell you right now, it is effortless, then it's not the right answer. That if it's effortless, then it's not the right answer. I still love you, it's just that you made me feel cold on the inside. Being alone must be awful. Right. Thank goodness all of you perceive me as being wise and intelligent. Drinking is not hurting my life. If you're torturing yourself trying to find the right solutions for your life, you're not doing it right. Fundamentally, this is the third one. I think we're always going to be torturing ourselves, right? It's the human condition. Drinking is not hurting my life. Do you understand that you won't be happy until you love me? This is for you. Seek out only one thing. What is the easiest, simplest path forward? You are developing a cyst. Gross. Emotional Mr. Student. the audience, okay. <laughs> Just kidding. Anyone who wants to do some XC after this, there is no truth, there is no path. That's true. What if I'm not a good teacher? Do what is easiest, do what is simplest, feel what is true. Holy shit, you guys, something's coming out of the back of the room. Look out. Sure. Nothing. No one. It's coming for you. It's going to destroy you. Everyone run, run. I felt pretty hard for this one. I feel like it's one of the most relatable experiences that you can have. To uh, assume that some other person is perfect and totally fulfilled in every way and completely miss all of the little flaws that make them painfully human. Uh, I think yeah. about this game a lot these days. That's 100% true.
This one took a lot longer than all the others for Coda to make. It was four months between this and the last one. That's twice as long as it took him to make any other game before this, and it's not like it's particularly complex, so I remember I found that a little strange at the time. Okay. I mean, something, real quick before I move on, something that's really important to note about people, and we so often compare ourselves to others and want to be like them and better ourselves. No one is perfect. No one is got it on lock. No one knows what they're doing in life. I strongly believe that. That even someone who looks like they've got it all together is flailing uh, inside. Um, I don't know if anyone here is religious, and I know some people are really don't like to talk about religion. I'm going to talk about religion real quick. Just very quick as an anecdotal thing. I was raised Catholic, so I know the Christian beliefs pretty well. And one thing that always occurred to me when I was like a teenager and thinking about trying to be perfect and we're always told as a Christian, you should be like God and you should be like Jesus. That's like the optimal pursuit is to be perfect like Jesus, the son of God. Jesus wasn't perfect. He was human. And I feel like that's a thing that growing up Christian teachers and priests, or well, most priests, not all priests, massively miss out on is a part in the Bible, and admittedly the Bible does not make it a focal point, but a part in the Bible where Jesus is about to be crucified, and it's the night before, and he knows he's going to be crucified the next day, and he knows it's been his destiny since day one on earth, and he prays to God, his supposed father, and asks him, don't make me do this. If there's another way, let me do that other way, because I don't want to die because he's scared. And that's the one time we see Jesus as a human figure in the whole Bible, because the Bible doesn't focus on it, but it's telling that if that supposedly happened, if that's supposedly true, if everything in the Bible is supposedly true, then Jesus was a human who made mistakes, had flaws, and had um, insecurities, right? And as someone who has a shit ton of insecurities and was raised Catholic, I kind of wish that that was more of a focal point that supposedly the perfect person that I was taught to be like was surprisingly like me. But, you know, he was also a better person, supposedly. Raised people from the dead and shit. Turned water into wine. A party trick. Anyways, that was Christian upbringing with PB. Or a stage. Or a backstage. I'm gonna step onto the stage. All right, that was unpleasant. Like, no shit, that actually made me feel uncomfortable from, like, stage fright, was just having the lights hit me. All right, continue on. Yeah, people got a complex with perfection? Hell yeah, they do. All right, this performance is beginning places, please. In this scene, you'll be playing as me. We are and a gathering professionals first. You'll start out leaning against this wall. Okay, good, stay right there. The woman across the room in this chair is a professional photographer of animals. It's your dream to photograph animals professionally. This is your one chance to learn something from her to gain something to succeed. Go on. Say something to her. Uh, hello? Hello? That's it? That's not a conversation. You need to actually converse with her. Be a human being. Do it again. Okay, yeah, this one gets to me. Uh... <laughs> Here are all my hopes and dreams. No, 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 that's not what I said to her at all. You're completely missing the tone of the conversation. I was reserved, but I knew what I wanted. I was confident. For some reason, I was just in... That just that one moment, but I was confident. Maybe it's that you need a better feel of, of the setting. There's a lot of people around us. Oh, fuck no. I'll give you some props to work with. These cones that bounce when you touch them will represent the people nearby. Now talk to her again.
You must have worked really hard to get where you are. You're messing it all up again. You'll freak her out if the conversation gets that personal that quickly. Do you realize how important this was for me? I'll never get another opportunity like this again. Every, everything was riding on this. Hmm, I want to try something. Try stepping back from the stage. Okay, lamppost. Safety. You want me to go all the way back? You want me to step away? Oh. Okay, yes. Now this is working. This the game ends right. with this eerie premonition of what's going to happen next in Coda's life. The solution to social anxiety, to fears of having to perform and having to chase success, the answer for Coda is to withdraw, to hide himself away. Which is what leads to scenarios like the stairs that slowed you down several games ago, where it just becomes harder and harder to access Coda's inner landscape because he keeps retreating. He just keeps backing away from possible connections to anyone other than himself. And to be honest, I didn't consider it very helpful when I first played this game. You know, it, it looked to me like he was trying to justify the idea of just disconnecting yourself from the world. And that wasn't what I wanted for him or for his games. Because I feel like a lot of his games are inviting me to connect. To connect with this person. To bring him closer. But what can you do? After this, Coda went off and took another five months to make a new game. June 2010. That was surprisingly accurate. Mobius trip. To play this game properly, you must keep your eyes closed. Click to begin the game. All right, I'm going to try and keep my eyes closed, so I'm not going to respond to anything in chat for a bit. Okay. I'm also going to keep push talk open so that you guys can hear me. Still got my eyes closed. I'm gonna try moving about. Apparently, I can move about. I, can, I think I can move about. I can. Thought I heard myself moving, but now I don't seem to hear it. I really want to open my eyes right now. Um, see. Okay. Do I open? I guess the game restarted. But... You should probably open your eyes if you haven't already. It's okay. pretty much impossible to solve otherwise. And there is a solution, by the way. There was a giant door and then my wisdom went black. Uh, what's going on? No idea where we are. Be quiet and help me find the shields. Am I going to be killed by a giant door? Yes. Is it to retreat? The only way to stop it is to speak, some, speak something that is honest. I can't keep making these. Yes, that's it. That's the truth. It's draining me. Like I said, I was getting concerned. First off, he's never been this explicit in his work about exactly what he's thinking. So, where's that coming from? But then, even weirder, his work has potentially stopped being an outlet for him. Not like he's having trouble iterating on ideas, but he literally just can't think of new ideas anymore. And in person, he was being a lot more distant than usual. Like, you know how sometimes a person will just deflect anything that you say in order to keep themselves disconnected all the time? It was that. Hi, that's me. Here was the point in my relationship with Coda where I really started to wonder if he needed my help in some way. Straining me. Keep going, keep talking. I. 
can't figure out how to save the thing. You're doing it. It's working. I, I'm alone. We're gonna be okay. His games are going to get more desperate from here on out. After this game, it's almost six months before he finishes something new. And it's not because they're taking longer to make in the sense of actually creating them, it's finding the energy to actually do anything I've been there for. Hello? Hello, is anyone there? Is that a person? How lovely. It's been a long time since I talked to anyone. What's wrong? You look lost. I am guessing he didn't, Gwen. That's my interpretation so far. When I try to create, I feel empty. Oh no. What's happened? Did something change? I'm trying to find this engine that used to protect me. Start it again. Wait, you're looking for a machine? I think I know where it is. It isn't far. I need to see it to know why it stopped. If the last game it, featured Coda talking explicitly about his creative frustrations, this one turns it up to 11. Now, put yourself in my shoes playing this. Here's a friend whose work is exhibiting signs of struggle, frustration, anxiety, depression, even. And yet, still, he keeps making games. He keeps throwing himself into the grinder even when he clearly doesn't have the energy for it anymore. Why? What is it for? I can take you to it, but there's a problem. Oh, it's Thank you, G. Santos, um, for the follow. It's got to be a difficult puzzle. If you can help me solve the puzzle, we'll find the machine. Deal? It doesn't matter what I say, does it? We're going to end up there one way or another, right? Deal. Yeah. Perfect. Come on. I'll show it to you. Because from my perspective at the time and, and just what I knew of him, this was a result of how isolated he was. He was in his own little bubble, just sitting at his computer all day, not really showing these games to anyone, uh, not releasing them onto the internet. And so he didn't have anyone outside of himself to connect with. He had no outlet to ground himself on. Here's the puzzle. What do you think? I've solved this puzzle before. Oh, wonderful. Can you tell me how to do it? I have a prediction here. This isn't going to be the same puzzle. It's not going to have the same. It's not going to have a solution, is my theory. First, you have to open the door. Okay, now what? Now you have to close the first door. Okay, maybe I was wrong. Alright, what's next? Now press the switch here. Okay, I was wrong. You can't ah, that was so talk simple. yourself out of loneliness. It doesn't work that way. You can't be the one writing both the questions and the answers. Then there's no movement. 
then there's no circulation. If all of your anxieties are being channeled into your work, then if the work ever fails, you have no backup and you're just going to crash. Poignant. Ha, huh, that was so simple. I can't believe I never solved it before this. Hello? Oh, it's all the dialogue that I gave. Okay. Here we are. Sounds like someone gasping for air. What are you talking about? Trust me. You'll see. You have to say that your work is fun and easy. You have to say that game development is simple and joyous and that you love it 100% of the time. Alright, making... Games is effortless. Ah, that feels wonderful. But it wasn't true. Don't worry about it, just keep talking. Keep saying that creation is easy. When I make games, I feel completely energized. Seeing this game at the time that he made it, it looked really unhealthy to me. I was watching him do this to himself, and I hated it. I hated seeing him so trapped. It's like, video games are not worth this amount of suffering. So, this also has all of my responses to stuff from the previous games as well. Guess it's wonderful, keep going. never stop creating and you'll never feel bad. Perfect. That this feels is someone fantastic. I really cared about. And I used to get so much joy out of seeing him create. For him to suddenly become angry and frustrated like this, it was the worst thing for me. None of this is helping. Patience, you have to trust me. I promise this will work. Please continue. This kind of reminds me of, I've never been in therapy. Well, no, I've never been in therapy. I've been in anger management classes when I was a kid, which is not the same thing, but it's the closest I've got to therapy. It's still talking someone about how you feel, I guess. Um, and this kind of reminds me of the concept of therapy where someone is telling you to do something to fix you, to make things better, and it fundamentally feels like a lie. Uh, the idea of telling yourself that everything is fine, that you'll get better, that there is hope, and then them telling you to trust you, just keep doing it and it will work out in the end, but and not all therapy will work because not all therapists will be good at their job, but there is a this situation I remember with with anger management for me. Um, yeah, I, I was like told counter to 10 bullshit wouldn't work. Of course it wouldn't work. I'm going to get into a bunch more fights because I won't even have 10 seconds to count before I'm punched in the face. And eventually it did work. And I've, uh, I, I, I still get angry, everyone gets angry, but I have not wanted to get into a fight with anyone I know in years. But it doesn't feel like it in the moment, and that's the hardest thing, is it doesn't feel like it's working. There's no, there's no progression until it suddenly works. Pain breezes effortlessly off me. Yes. More. Keep going. I don't know. This is what I felt at the time. I don't know how else to explain it. Did you just confirm that your code? I wanted it to stop more than anything. I had never felt so rotten. I just... I needed more than I had ever needed anything for this to stop. That sounds like you're talking as Coda right there.
There is no shame, no fear, no guilt. Incredible. That's it. I'm free. I'm free. Now we're back to the prison. And the girl crying. But it didn't stop. After finishing this one, Coda takes another seven months and comes up with a new game. May 2011. The machine. Mom, glad to see you've arrived safely. We've captured the machine. It's waiting for you now. You can begin the interrogation whenever you like. I intend to be quiet. Very good. Just be warned that someone called the press, so we might have a bit of attention on this one. Also, one more thing that you should know about the machine. It calls itself Coda. My friends. It falls on me to deliver bad news. The machine refuses to admit that it deliberately hurt us. But this is not important. We are stronger than it thinks we are. Let us show it that we are not fearless. Follow me, we will destroy everything that the machine has created. So uh, now the work is becoming self-destructive. And I'll tell you, at the time that I first played this game, shortly after he made it, here's what I'm thinking to myself. I'm thinking that Code is stuck in his own head, and that it's having a very negative effect on him, and that all he needs to do is just start showing his work to people, to get some actual feedback on his games. It might get him out of isolation. And so, as I'm thinking this, I realized that I could be the one to initiate it. Because it would never occur to Coda to start actively soliciting feedback, so what if I did it for it? 
If he could see the difference it would make to have more actual conversations with other human beings, would that bring him out of his mental spiral? Would it give him confidence in himself? Would it bring meaning back into his work? So I started showing Coda's work to people. I took this one, and the islands which you just played, the theater, the notes, the house cleaning game, and some of the prison escape games. I brought them to people that I knew and, and trusted. I asked their opinions. And the great part is that they really loved his games. You know, the point of it all was just to give them some external reference point, but they, they genuinely loved his work. There was nothing for him to be afraid of. down your weapon. Can you see why I felt like this was the right thing to do? Because it's the thing that I always feel like I need to be told that my work is good, that I am good. When, when someone really connects with a thing that I've made, when they see themselves purely in my work, there's nothing that feels better. And I got to give that very same feeling to my friend. I did something, I really felt like I had done something good. Like, like I was a good person. I felt like there was a friend who was in trouble and was unhappy and, and maybe didn't like themselves and I could fix it. If I could give him this gift, maybe I could fix the problem. When they told me how much they enjoyed his games, it was the best feeling, it was the absolute best feeling. It made me feel so happy, so beautifully, beautifully happy. Um, so anyway, Coda finishes this game, and then really he just kind of takes off for a while. So this is June of 2011, and I didn't hear anything from him for several weeks, I guess. Uh, and so out of nowhere, one day I get an email, and it's got a private link to a new game of Coda's. This one is called The Tower, and to my knowledge, it's the last game that Coda ever made. So let's take a look. June 2011. The Tower. And this is where I have trouble saying anything meaningful about Coda's work. Because more than anything else, the tower just feels distant. It feels like it's trying to distance itself from the world. It's a very cold game. Hauntingly beautiful though, the architecture in particular. I feel like I've just walked into something ancient. This room actually has a maze in it. Except that all the walls of the maze are invisible. And then every time you touch one of the walls, there's this awful flashing and noise. So the experience is really miserable. The game goes beyond not being meant to be played. It actually seems to despise the player for trying to play it at all. But I do want to show you the rest of the level. So when you're ready to continue, Press enter and I'll put a bridge over the maze. That's cool, namely, I didn't know that. So this is like the last point of his destruction. Whereas you put it ultimate destruction, which sounds a lot better than last. Point of and to be fair, I'm it's done. not like this is the first game that's needed some modification to be playable. Like the house cleaning game. You know, that one used to actually loop the cleaning chores and you just cleaned a house forever. 
I had to cut it off so that you could exit the house and the game would actually end. But that game had an idea that it was actually trying to communicate. What's the deeper idea behind the invisible maze? Yeah, the I can only definitely way get past this challenge is to randomly guess the six-digit code. Like the invisible maze, it's frustrating to me because it's the opposite of everything else that Coda has made. It doesn't encourage thought or engagement. It doesn't ask anything of me except a lot of my time. If I could have reached him during this time, then maybe I could have asked him, but I couldn't. I still don't really understand why this is here. I'll put the code on the ground for you here, though, so that we can move on. The switch to open this door is actually on the other side of the door, meaning that it's literally impossible to solve from this side. So even if you somehow brute forced your way through the first two challenges and you got to this point, there's actually just no way to progress. And it's scary for me, the idea of Koda cutting himself off entirely, just saying, you know, that's it, that's the end of the conversation, not giving me any way to fix the problem. Gonna interrupt him real quick. If he's not Coda, then there's another narrative going on here, and that narrative. Thank you, Rod Robotic Soda Pop, for the follow. Yeah, if he's not Coda, which I'm starting to think he's probably not, he could be, but it's it's harder now to link that than it was before. If he's not Coda, then he is Davy, and Coda is a separate person. In which case, there is a na another narrative going on here, which is a very uh, significant narrative, because a lot of people think this, and it's wrong. Which is when you come across someone who has some sort of problem, especially like a mental problem, it, it, uh, uh, so many people think that they can fix you, that they can help. If I inserted myself into this person's life, I could help them, I could save them, which is selfish. It's, it's people wanting to be the hero of someone else's life, to be adored by that person because you are the one who saved them. And I'm feeling like that's what Davy wants right now. In his narration right now, it seems very much like he wants to save Coda, even if Coda doesn't want to be saved or doesn't need saving I don't know it, it's when, when I originally started when I paused the game and started to say that I, I had a clearer way of how to describe what I'm trying to say and now I've lost it a bit but you you, you, you get me I'm gonna click continue now like a failure I guess when I can't fix the problem exactly he wants to be the hero but I can open this door for you so let me do that Was I a failure for not understanding this game? It's like everything's about Davy at this it's point. It's not like everything needs to have a solution, but I feel it somehow. I feel like I failed, and I don't understand why. Thanks. <laughs> I remember. It's June of 2011. I'm playing this for the very first time. And as I'm playing, I'm thinking to myself, I don't know this person. I have no idea who this person is. It wasn't the guy I knew, it wasn't my friend. I had come to so many conclusions from looking at all of his work up to this point, and then suddenly none of them... I had been trying to, though, that was the thing. For years I was trying to get to know him, to understand who he actually was and, and what he stood for. I asked him so many times to please just tell me what his games mean to him. I asked him please to tell me what the three dots mean. And he wouldn't. Three dots like the ellipses and conversations? 
or was there another three dots that I missed? Also, an an another thing. So, as much as looking at, thank you, Quinn. As as much as looking at art is about what the artist meant, and so often when studying art of any form, that's what you're doing is looking at what the artist's intention was. That's not what art is there for. It's all art to me is reflective of the world and self-reflective of the person. Because when you look at a painting, it doesn't matter what the painting is, even if it's I, I don't particularly like modern art. Modern art doesn't really do much for me. But even when looking at like a a blank red canvas um, it can mean something to you and it tells you about yourself more than it tells you about the person who made it you can try and decode what the person who created it meant but it's more about what it makes you think about you and your surroundings and that's a really interesting part about this is that Davy is talking about trying to understand Coda but these games should be trying to tell him something about himself and he's missing the point um, if you've watched it, if you haven't watched it, go watch it because it's a fantastic. It's one of my favorite Netflix shows of all time. If you haven't, if you have watched it, then in in, in Netflix's Daredevil, there's a scene where a character goes to a, a painting gallery and, and and looks at some artwork, and it's more or less modern art. And there is one artwork in it. In fact, the episode's I think named after it, which is um. It's called A Rabbit in a Snowstorm, and it's this uh, gradients of white canvas painting. Um, so it, it, it's all white, but there are you know, shades of white, so some of it's a little bit more grey and whatever. And the character looking at the painting is asked how it makes him feel, and his response is alone. Because apparently there's a rabbit in that snowstorm, but you can't see it. And, and that, that was the first time I really started to understand what very simplistic blank colour paintings could actually still have depth to them somehow, which I'd never really thought of before when looking at modern art. Um, and I thought that was particularly interesting because someone else could have a completely different response. You know what art you're looking at now? I'm looking forward to seeing it, as per usual. Is it Aegon's butt again? Because that, that tells me a lot about you, mainly. First bit of colour in this game so far. Everything else has been gradients of black and white. I, I just felt so strongly that if I could have connected with him, that if I could have somehow made his work my own, that I would finally be once and for all happy. It was that I needed to see myself in someone else. I needed to be someone other than me. But he stopped and left. And it felt somehow like I had failed. Where did I screw up? Dear Davy, thank you for your interest in my games. I'm the reason that you stopped making games, aren't I? It's because of what I did. I poisoned it for you. I need to ask you to not speak to me anymore. I don't think I ever told you this. But when I took your work and I was showing it to people, it actually felt... <laughs> it felt as though I were responsible for something important and valuable. I wonder at times whether you think I'm making these games for you. Even... you're so... <laughs> You've so and the damage. people who played them, they treated me like I was important. They really listened and cared about what I had to say. Even though I was showing your work, it was... I felt good about myself. Finally. For a moment, while I had that, 
I liked myself. You've so infected my personal space, it's, it's possible I did begin to plant solutions in my work somewhere hidden between games. If there was an answer, a meaning, would it make you any happier? Would you stop taking my games and showing them to people against my wishes? Giving them something that is not yours to give? Violating the one boundary that keeps me safe? Would you stop changing my games? Stop adding lampposts to them. And then you stopped. And I didn't have anything left to show people. I, I just had to be with myself. And as soon as that happened, there was no feeling at all. Nothing. Less than nothing. What does that mean? It is to me too. I'm, I don't want to stop and talk about it too much yet just because I don't want to lose the momentum of what's currently happening. When I'm around you, I feel physically ill. You desperately need something and I cannot give it to you. I literally do not have it. Real quick though, what is super interesting as well is that this game is impossible to complete without cheating. So in theory, there was at least a part of Coda that never wanted Davy to see this, as well as a part that wanted him to see it, because otherwise he wouldn't put it in there. Struggling to come up with a new idea is not making me depressed. Low points are just a part of the process. The fact that you think I am frustrated or broken says more about you than about me. I realise that this doesn't make sense to you just yet. Which is fine. You're not my problem to solve. But I do hope that one day it clicks and that you make peace with this thing you are wrestling. I'm afraid that I did something really stupid because I don't like myself. You probably did, Penguin, but at the same time, I feel like there is a part of it being at the end rather than as he goes through. The fact that he has to cheat to get to there is a part of him is saying that he doesn't... I, that is how I'm reading it anyways. But yeah, I think he probably did know he was going to cheat, but if he... If there wasn't an, an extra layer to the fact that it's beyond the cheating point that these messages are here, then they would have just been before the cheating point, right? He just would have read them from the beginning of the, this level. And when you finally see what I am talking about, don't say anything. That's why I'm releasing this collection of your work, is because I haven't been able to find any other way to reach you. I've tried everything, and so a part of me has hope that if I put this compilation out into the world, and if I put my name on it, that maybe enough people will play it so that it'll find its way to you, so that I can tell you that I'm sorry. I know I screwed up. If I apologize to you truly and deeply, Will you start making games again? Please, I need to feel okay with myself again. And I always felt okay as long as I had your work to see myself in. I mean, is, is something wrong with me? Because I know that I did an awful thing, and I'm doing it again right now. Like, I'm, I'm showing people your work, but I can't stop myself from doing it. That's how badly I need to feel something again. Like, I'm an addict. There has to be something wrong with me. Can I apologize? What if I tell you I was wrong? Will that work? Will that fix it? I, I, I don't know. I don't think it will, but there's nothing else that I can do. Just tell me what you want. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Please, start making games again. Please help me. Please give me some of whatever it is that, that makes you complete. I want whatever that wholeness is that you just summoned out of nothing and you put into your work. You were complete in some way that I never was. And I want to know how to, how to, I want to know how to be a good person. I want to know how not to hate myself. Please. I'm fading, and all I want is to know that I'm going to be okay. I didn't realize the other door was getting closer to me. Is that the end? 
Take a look. Okay. I'm going to I'm going to try and wait until the very end of the game when we're back on the main menu to talk about my thoughts so far. This is that famous train station in New York, right? I've forgotten his name. I recognize it. Played this once in Spider-Man when I was fighting Shocker back in the old days. Now it looks like a uh, more, 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 more love, more praise, more people telling me that I'm good. Always more, more, more. It's like a disease. I might be wrong because this could actually be a train station in New York, this room here, but this reminds me of a train station in London. Grand Central, that's what I was thinking of. But that outside part just there reminded me more of one in London, but I don't know what Grand Central completely looks like. I've never solution. been there in real life, so. Solution, solution. Croft Manor. I guess if someone had told me ahead of time that he just really enjoyed making prison games, maybe I wouldn't have thought he was so desperate. I wouldn't have told so many people that he was depressed. Maybe he just likes making prisons. The Deathly Hallows one? Yeah, it does kind of remind me of King's Cross. Even now, the disease is telling me to stop. Don't show people what a shitty person you are. They'll hate you. Yeah, I definitely feel that when as well. If I knew that my life depended on finding something to be driven by other than validation, what would that even be? <laughs> it's strange, but the thought of not being driven by external validation is unthinkable. Like, I actually cannot conceive of what that would be like. That's what I'm thinking, uh, Ghibli, and I will touch on that again once uh, I get to uh, the main menu again. Once the game is fully over, I will touch on my thoughts, because it's what all related. Now? I've got to say, like some people really don't like walking simulators, and essentially... I think I need to go. Essentially, that's and what this game... I'm sorry, because... I know that I said that I would be here and I would walk you through this, but I'm starting to feel like I have a lot of work to do. I have a lot that I need to make up for, and so I'm just gonna... You know what, I'm talking about okay. walking simulators when I get back to the main menu, because that's also a thing that's just gonna interrupt the tempo of this moment. This... <sighs> okay. If I make a weird voice, does it make it easier to make me seem like a goofy dumbo? Actually, namely, that was a fact. When there was the text on all the walls, I was thinking it's like walking through a uh, museum and looking at the, the displays on the museum. Like, for the rest of it, I hadn't really felt like it was a museum per se, but that, that final level by Coda, that final moment, I was like, this feels exactly like walking through a museum. And retrospectively, I could see it as well.
back at Grand Central. Also, we've just gone from a beautifully textured place that even if it's not photorealistic invokes the feeling of Grand Central into a textureless corridor. Food for there. And the beam at the end of uh, Coda's was it his first game or was it his second game? The Space Station game. I think that was his second game, I want to say. Or it might have been his first, I can't remember. It was like two hours ago at this point. <laughs> and I'm flying again. Just like the first bug. And a giant maze. I can definitely see that feeling of oh, that fairy penguin. The only potential issue I see with it, well, it's not in a literal sense. Here's my theory, uh, which ties in essentially to your one penguin, is Coda doesn't exist. What I mean by that is if Coda is real and this whole story is real, then Davy is, first of all, incredibly brave for putting himself out there so nakedly um, and letting people criticize him because what he supposedly did to Coda was pretty awful. But it also makes him incredibly stupid, and I, I don't realistically see someone doing that. I, I think I, I think I said it right at the very beginning. Is I don't see someone taking games made by someone else in private 
and releasing them on Steam. I, I, I don't see anyone doing that, and I also don't see there not being any controversy around someone doing that in the real world. So my theory is it's a fictional story. Uh, the whole story of Davy and Coda is fiction. But like any fiction, as I've been saying throughout playing this game, it's reflective of the real world, reflective of personal experiences of the person, and self-reflective of both the artist and the person experiencing the art. And I think pretty much everyone watching the stream can probably evoke with at least one part, if not all, of the story between Coda and Davy. I, earlier I even compared it to it, it doesn't just have to be artists, it can just be anyone with what seemingly mental health issues or even physical health issues and someone feeling like they can save that person. Yeah, I think it's a fictional story and it's metaphorical. And given that, that therefore makes essentially Davy and Coda the same person because Davy is a real person and Coda is a fictional person created by Davy, therefore they are the same. And yeah, therefore, in a way, I think it does tie into the Stanley Parable and his feelings and his fear of not being able to live up to it. But I think it can also be taken as a separate thing that does not directly tie to the Stanley Parable. They can be two completely separate things. I feel like you can 100% experience this without knowing anything about the Stanley Parable, and it still is the same and is just as poignant. Um... There are some clues to this, I think, throughout the game as well. Um, one of them being the final level feels very much like the design of Coda, uh, except for being a little bit more straightforward. Um, so either that's Davy trying to... Just finishing, I'm afraid, Nikita. Um, but thanks for stopping by. Um, what was I saying? It could, it could be Davy trying to replicate uh, Coda's style, or it could be that, that he's got the same style along. And when I was playing the various levels, there was there was a point, I think it was the level where you do the house cleaning, where like the graphical fidelity went up, and I was like, huh, this kind of reminds me of the feel of the Stanley Parable. It, it looks like it was done by the same person, probably because it was. But yeah, I think ultimately it's, yeah, I think it's a fictional tale, but just like any fictional tale, it is very, well not every fictional tale, it's Michael Bay in the world, a lot of fictional tales, it's got a lot of meaning to it. There's that as well, Quinn. Um, yeah, and I, I think... You know, it, it, can, it can go one of two ways, because if, if it's all true, it's still a heavily edited version of that story for distribution, because in documentaries are the same. They're, they're edited to fit around a narrative that someone wants to tell, so things like the revelation that Davy put in the lamppost right at the very end is intentional to get a reaction out of the audience so it could be a true story and he's just edited it in such a way that he doesn't reveal that earlier on or it could be um fictional but it, it doesn't if it's I, me saying it's fictional is not me discrediting it i think it's just as significant and just as meaningful uh as a piece of fiction because i don't think that non-fiction is any better than fiction in that way um and, you know, it's, it could well be based on a true story. The main thing is, even if Davy essentially did that to a person, I still think the g games were made by Davy because he didn't want to steal Coda's games. I st still don't think someone would do that. But anyways. And then what I was going to say about walking simulators as I was finishing the game was um, I, some people really seem to hate walking simulators because they don't see them as video games. I love walking simulators that are well made, dude. And this was essentially a walking simulator. Ones that, they're like self-reflective journeys. It's kind of like, when I go and walk my dog, when I'm back at my parents' house, I always take her on the same walk. Like 90% of the time I take her on the same walk, which is to the woods near where I live. Um, 
and because of that, it's it's pretty robotic. Uh, there's there's not a lot of thought of where I'm going to walk her or anything like that. Get to a certain point, take her off the lead. Get to a certain point, put her back on the lead. There's you know if there's anyone else walking the dog, put her back on the lead. That sort of thing. Um, thank you, Nikita. That's very nice of you to say. Uh, I haven't played What Remains of Edith Finch yet, but I do want to play that. It's on my uh, Steam wish list, which I use to dictate what I'm going to eventually buy and then stream. Um, but yeah, when, when I'm walking the dog, because it's so routine, I get lost in my own thoughts. And, and I... I think... Like how some people have shower thoughts, my, my shower thoughts happen when I'm walking my dog. And walking simulators always evoke that same feeling to me of just being taken on a journey of thought. Um, the first walking simulator I ever played was one called the Old City Leviathan, which is very hands-off compared to this game, in the sense that this game has a narrator that is 100% is fictional. Yeah, I think so, Penguin. Um, the, the, the narrator kind of guides you. I think most people kind of come to the same finish point when they play this game, which is fine. I'm totally okay with that, but it's a very guided artistic experience. The Old City Leviathan is just, yo, here's, here's, here's some thoughts. Uh, think about that. And I, to this day, I don't know what that game was about, but I still think about it every now and again. I'm like, damn, that was a good game. Might stream it again one day, but uh, I, I played it for YouTube, and the problem with it is that it has these letters in the game that are very long and take like half an hour to read each. So, wouldn't be super entertaining for a stream unless you find my voice soothing, apparently. <laughs> um, but yeah. But I, I really enjoy these sorts of games, and I'm really glad I played it. Hell of a contrast to Stanley Parable, but in a very good way as well. But anyways, thank you everyone who came out. We've actually had the most viewers we've had in a long time, which is super awesome to see. Um, so if you like more of this sort of game, let me know and I'll try and like find my niche. Um, I probably won't be streaming tomorrow or the day after. Well, Sunday I might be streaming because... No, I won't be streaming because it'll be 3 5. Um... Hopefully. Uh, but I'll hopefully be streaming on Monday. So look out for that if you want to look out for that. Uh, probably around the same time. 7pm UK time. Uh, welcome G Santos. Glad you enjoyed it. Um, Alright. <laughs> Thank you Ghibli for the uh, follow. And on that note I'm going to wish you all a good night. Or good day if you're in the middle of your day somewhere in America or Australia. I guess you'd probably be in the morning if you're in Australia. Have a, have a good one. And don't steal people's art. <laughs> Alright. Thank you, Namely. I'll bear that in mind for future playthroughs of other stuff. Alright, guys. I'm gonna end this here. Probably gonna upload it to YouTube at some point, but I'm gonna end this here. Thanks for stopping by. And now I'm going to press the stop streaming button. But I want to kind of leave a little bit of a buffer just in case. Like, because sometimes it cuts you off mid-sentence. And I'm fine if it cuts it off mid-sentence at this point. Because this point's just, like, buffer to get cut off. But I don't want to get cut off when I'm saying goodnight to you guys. And how much I, you know, adore you and love you and appreciate all of your coolness. Y'all pretty cool. <laughs> Thanks, Nicodemus, for the follow. I'm going to click stop streaming. Five seconds off that gift ended. But thank you.